This is a story of a TypeScript feature. An operator who tried to help all the TypeScript developers. But life was never fair to him. Developers turned against him. He only wanted to make their lives easier. But they never approved his pull requests. He was all alone with his thoughts. They broke his heart forever. It was devastating. Okay, enough with the drama. In this episode of Too Long To Read TypeScript, uh, we will learn the non-null assertion operator. Seriously, who named this feature like this? And we have a lot to talk about it. Uh, we will discuss about when to use it, uh, when not to use it, uh, how it works, and uh, we will also compare it with the optional chaining operator. So, uh, just to understand the difference. Ah, I also have a surprise for you at the end of this video, so make sure you watch until the end. Okay, here we go. Ah, I'm gonna stay here. Cool. Yeah, that's such a nice intro. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Hello, friends. Uh, it's Nikos here, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, this uh, channel is all about front-end stuff. So uh, you are watching my series about uh, TypeScript. It's actually a complete course. You can watch it for free. Uh, today, uh, we will talk about the non-null assertion operator. And uh, it's this uh, exclamation mark that uh, we use at the end of the value. So let's see how it works. So here we have a type playlist, which uh, has an ID, which is a string, and it has a name, which is also a string. But the ID property is an optional one, which means uh, the uh, consumers of this type don't actually need to specify an ID in their objects. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to create my playlist and assign an object without an ID. So this object will have only a name property. Awesome. So uh, now, obviously, if uh, we have uh, an ID string and we try to get a my playlist dot ID, um, that's not going to work at all, right? Because uh, we know for sure that ID could be a string and it could be undefined. But what if I um, already have the functionality to test? if this is a valid uh, playlist object. So, for example, what if I have a validate uh, playlist method or function in which I will pass my playlist and then this will check whether my object is valid or not. And I can have uh, a function which will accept a playlist and it will basically check if uh, the playlist contains an ID and if uh, that's not true, this is not true, then it will basically, yeah, let's throw an error. Awesome. So uh, it seems like uh, I have my functionality here. I validate the playlist. If the playlist is invalid, this will throw an error at runtime. And this is what we want. We don't want TypeScript to check if uh, this uh, ID here exists at all. We actually want to uh, tell TypeScript to take it for granted that this thing here is a string. But uh, yeah, somebody of you will say, okay, why don't we use any here? That will do the job, right? Yeah, but uh, we don't want the ID to be uh, recognized as any. We want the ID that we declare here, a const ID variable, to always be considered as a string. So all we need is somehow to tell TypeScript that we know what we are doing here, uh, please uh, let us do what we want, okay? And there are multiple ways to do that. For example, uh, you can use uh, uh, TS ignore, and this will ignore uh, one line below. So it will only affect 915, uh, which means that this code will not have any type checking whatsoever. So if this is a number, um, it will also be ignored. And again, this is not what we want. So let's remove that one. Another idea, a uh, pretty nice one, is to actually uh, have here something like as string, which means that uh, we instruct TypeScript 
to ignore what the type of this uh, property value here is and to take it for granted that this is a string. I know what I'm doing, this is a string, take it or leave it. And this is a much better solution because now we control what this thing is, uh, but I have a much simpler one. We can use the exclamation mark at the end and uh, this is actually the non-null assertion operator. This is what we are trying to learn today. Uh, so yeah, this is what it is. Uh, it's just an exclamation uh, mark at the end of a value. And all it does is, you know, uh, if this value is null or undefined, yeah, we don't care about it. So just simply ignore. So all the other checks are uh, gonna be applied. For example, if this would have been a number, uh, this will not work because uh, here, for example, the number is not assignable to a string. Uh, you get what I mean here. If I had, for example, as string here, this would have uh, thrown an error. Uh, this would have caused this error here. But now, since I'm using the exclamation, uh, yeah, if this is a number, we will have the error here, basically. And there you have it. So basically, uh, again, we have a playlist uh, type. Uh, we use our own functionality. It doesn't matter what this function does. We use a function. We know that uh, this function will evaluate, validate a playlist uh, object. And regardless of what this object contains, we don't care. We want just uh, in the second line of code to uh, take it for granted that we don't want to break anything. We just want to, uh, if, if this is a null or anything, we, we don't care. We, we are sure this will work. And that's one reason that you can use the non-null assertion operator in your code. But now let's see a more sophisticated example. The non-null assertion operator makes total sense when you use maps, for example. Here we have a map, uh, album tracks, which has uh, two tracks and we get their uh, numbers, which represent basically the uh, track number in their album. So what we can do is uh, go here and uh, get, for example, the track number from one of the tracks. Uh, you can have, for example, album tracks.get. And uh, as you can see here are all the uh, methods of a map. We want the get one and uh, we want the name of the track love of my life and boom that will basically uh, do the trick so now uh, if i try to console log for example this track number plus one take a look at this typescript is complaining here and the reason is complaining is uh, because object is potentially undefined because if you remember the number uh, could be undefined. So uh, this may not be an actual record within this album tracks map. So we need to somehow uh, tell TypeScript that, uh, yeah, but you know, TypeScript, uh, let this up to me. I know what I'm doing. Uh, please don't uh, yell at me. Please just relax. And yes, what's the best way to do that? Again, is uh, to use the non-null assertion operator. And here, for example, uh, TypeScript will take it for granted that uh, this thing here is a number and it will be always treated as a number, regardless if this will return undefined or null. So we let the execution of uh, this program here, we let the uh, compiler, the, the runtime of JavaScript to come up with errors when is needed. and. Uh, this could be an interesting feature actually when you are testing your code. So when you are writing tests for your functions or for your components or when you are using some kind of uh, library, let's say Cypress, uh, sometimes you want to uh, get rid of the TypeScript uh, compiler errors because you know already that you have performed the checks in uh, somewhere else in your code. Another question is under which situations this operator could be useful. And uh, yeah, there are many use cases the non-null assertion operator could be useful. We've seen already testing. If you are writing a unit test or if you are using some uh, library like uh, Cypress, for example, uh, you already want to test some things. Uh, you don't care about uh, 
typing at that moment, or you may want to trigger an error. So uh, yeah, you should use this uh, exclamation mark and it will make your life easier. And I have seen this uh, feature in many production applications, uh, especially React components. Uh, when you deal, for example, with uh, uh, third-party libraries uh, such as Redux, you know already uh, you have some checks inside your store. Uh, so you get the state and you know already that the type is the correct one, that uh, the object is uh, there. Otherwise, this action would not have been thrown, right? So uh, you don't want TypeScript to uh, blame you about all these type mismatches. And um, yeah, React Refs is also a nice example. Uh, browser APIs is also a very nice use case. So when an event handler is being triggered, you know already what uh, the event uh, target will be. So uh, you don't need TypeScript to uh, worry about all these things. Uh, and sometimes you trust the browser uh, APIs because uh, yeah, if this will not work, then uh, it's actually not only your problem, right? <laughs> And uh, yeah, error handling is also a nice uh, solution. For example, you want to uh, throw some errors. You don't care uh, what happens next. So uh, the question now is, should I use it? And you know what they say, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. And that's true with the non-null assertion operator as well. So uh, this operator can cause you a lot of trouble if you don't use it carefully. And uh, it may result runtime errors that are invisible for you at uh, development time and compilation time, uh, but they will not be invisible to your users. So uh, the application may crash, uh, a lot of bugs can be introduced, and uh, that's why I strongly recommend to use this feature with caution. And you know, if you uh, receive a pull request, and you are reviewing it and you see that uh, some of your colleagues is actually using this operator in their solution, then um, just be a little bit more careful, both of you, uh, because there may be a use case you didn't think of. Or, um, you know, developers sometimes, we are lazy, we don't want to deal with uh, all these TypeScript errors. Or sometimes we open Stack Overflow and we see, ah, exclamation mark, it works, I will use it, everything is okay, I will not read any documentation, I will not uh, spend any time to understand what is this uh, feature is doing. So, yeah, uh, I just don't want to deal with it, it's not my problem anymore. And, uh, yeah, that's not cool for <laughs> the other developers in your team, so uh, you should have zero tolerance when it comes to uh, code quality. And actually, that's why you used TypeScript from the very beginning, to improve code quality, not to introduce um, loopholes like this one. You can also share this video with your colleagues and you'll be fine. And let me know in the comments down below uh, if you are using this operator and uh, yeah, share your opinion about uh, any use case that uh, I didn't mention in this video. So now there's a question. How the non-null assertion operator compares to optional chaining? Uh, are these two interchangeable? Well, the answer is a strong no. So this exclamation mark here will be completely removed in the uh, transpiled code by the compiler. So uh, the final result will be this one, because this is a TypeScript-only feature, and it only uh, tells TypeScript it's only used to tell TypeScript that, you know, uh, I know what I'm doing, ignore the null and the uh, undefined values if uh, are any uh, here in this value. So basically, I disable the TypeScript checks for a while. Uh, on the other side, the optional chaining operator is actually checking something that is uh, within uh, a part of uh, the object chain. So here, for example, we can check whether album tracks exists or if it's undefined. If it's undefined, then uh, the rest of the code will not be executed. So we will not call this function at all. But if the album tracks is uh, defined and it's not null or undefined, then uh, 
this will pass the test and then we will continue the execution uh, by calling this function here. Um, so that's the difference. The um, non-null assertion operator will not pause the execution. It's not a type guard, it will not check anything. The uh, exclamation mark is just to tell TypeScript, please ignore this part and uh, yeah, everything is going to be fine. Do you know that uh, every video in this series has a corresponding article? In my blog post, you will find everything I presented to you in this video, including the coding examples. And I'm frequently adding more content that I find useful in these articles. You know, it's much easier to edit this article uh, compared to edit and upload these videos. So there you will find the latest and the greatest. And if you are currently uh, learning TypeScript, if you are in the learning process, uh, then you will really enjoy the official student's companion page. It's a better way to consume this course. Uh, I'm also announcing some exclusive bonus content for all the members. And uh, yeah, it's totally free. And this time I'm very happy to announce that uh, yeah, we have a newsletter. So you can find the form to subscribe uh, to my mailing list in my website if you want to join. Don't worry, I'm not a spammer. I only send uh, emails, let's say, once per month or so. And I'm really putting a lot of effort to find uh, something interesting for you. So I'm only sharing meaningful stuff. This is the best way if you want to track uh, what I'm currently working on. And uh, trust me, I have a lot in my mind. So let me know if you have any questions or even suggest a topic that we didn't cover so far. Until the next one, thanks for watching um, and click here to subscribe because uh, we have a lot in the pipeline waiting for you and uh, yeah, if you want to watch this series from the very beginning, click my playlist, you will find it here, all the episodes one by one. Have a creative day and see you in the next one.